Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mangus and I welcome you guys to the start of a brand new randomized Fire Emblem Let's Play. This time around, we're gonna be randomizing Fire Emblem 7. Ooh, but wait Manx, you've already done that. Yes, I have. In fact, it was my first randomized Fire Emblem Let's Play. However, I was really dissatisfied with that Let's Play because since it was my first time randomizing, I uh, accidentally used a very old, outdated, and clunky randomizer that was super tricky to implement and filled the game with bugs. It, it was like it was years old, so you know it, it's to be expected. Um, and it filled the game with bugs to the point where I couldn't even complete it because Battle Before Dawn was unplayable due to Jafar just being a retard. <laughs> just the game just was so bugged overall. Um, I think it also tinkered a lot with the growth rates to of different characters and such. So, um, since then, I've randomized two other Fire Emblem games, Fire Emblem 6 and Fire Emblem 8, and uh, I've had tons of fun with both of them, uh, especially since I discovered the new randomizer uh, by Otaku Reborn, which is just amazing. I will link it in the video description if you want to go check it out for yourself. It's super easy to use. You just get a ROM, you run the randomizer, you load the ROM in the randomizer, and you get this nice little menu that is super intuitive. You can tinker around with a lot of different stuff, and you don't even need a tutorial to uh, to understand that thing. It, it's so intuitive and really nice, nice little sign. So, for this particular run, we're going to be playing Elliewood Hard Mode, but we're going to be increasing the growth rates of the enemies by 30%. Now, if you don't know how significant this is going to be later on, it's absolutely insane. Uh, we're definitely going to be seeing capped enemies in the late game, and the bosses are going to be through the roof. So, the reason why I like doing Elliewood's uh, story is because I just prefer the enemy placements, uh, and also, I think it's it's a little bit easier in the early game, whereas Hector Hard Mode is insanely rough in the early game and gets a lot easier towards the late game. So, hopefully, by increasing growth rates by 30%, we'll get a really tricky Hard Mode, uh, which starts off a little bit easy and then gets really hard towards the mid and late game. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm also gonna be randomizing uh, recruitments, which means that we'll see a lot of uh, funny characters that we otherwise wouldn't see in the early game. And I'm not gonna lie, I did have a sneak peek of my initial starting units, and I was so happy when I saw who was part of it. So, oh my god, you're, you're just gonna have to see. Now, aside from that, I don't know anything else about any of the other units that join later on. I want to keep it fresh. I want to give you guys my initial reaction to the units. I think that's a big part of the randomized Let's Play, so I haven't gone and watched the log where you can see all the units that join. I, I want to be surprised. I want to be, you know, I don't want to be spoiled. So I've also randomized slightly uh, base stats and constitution. So you might see, a, like, just, just the base stats are a little bit up and down. I think I varied them by tree, so they can go up tree points or, or down tree points. I think that makes it a lot more interesting. Because it makes certain characters good when they wouldn't be, and they could also make some characters really bad, but that's part of the randomization experience. Uh, aside from that, I haven't randomized anything. I haven't randomized uh, growth rates, because randomizing growth rates in many cases makes the game completely unplayable. Uh, because you can get like, uh, your lord can get like a 5% strength growth, and then you're screwed. So, <laughs> without further ado, ladies and gentlemen. Let us uh, jump into the game. And we're gonna be playing, of course, Elliot Hard Mode, as I said. Let's create our tactician. We have to we have to create our tactician. Like of course we have to create our tactician. It's so easy because you know you just uh you just you just delete Ma? No crap. I deleted the A. Oh. Then you write Mang. Now I've also uh, randomized the affinity, I forgot to mention that. So my tactician bonus, I usually just include March because that's my birthday. My tactician bonus may be relevant or it may be irrelevant, depending on who gets the wind affinity, so. Uh, I do like uh, having the Wind Affinity, because it means Lin and Sane gets a little bit better. So, of course, this is not going to be a story-based uh, LP. We're going to be skipping all dialogue and jumping straight into the chapters and only focus on gameplay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the lord of this Let's Play. It's Bartra. Now, when I saw that Bartra was the lord, I really laughed, because I do love Bartra, even though he's a crap unit. I actually really like Bartra's personality. Uh, if you can hear some thunder and wind in the background, that's because there's a storm outside. Just thought I'd let you guys know. I don't think my microphone will pick up on it, but you know, just felt like saying that. So, uh, Bartra. 
one of his major problems in this game is that he has a very low speed base. But as an Elliewood Lord, <laughs> he, he has a base speed of 8, which is fantastic, because his strength growth is 50% and his speed growth is 40%. So his constitution got lowered a little bit, though. I do believe Bartra normally has more con than 6, but hey, that's what you get with the randomizer. His luck is garbage, though, so he is prone to getting critical hits, which kind of sucks. But still, Bartra's going to be a fun main character. Now, when your main character gets randomized, for all intents and purposes, he still functions like Elliewood. Like, he still gets Elliewood's horse promotion. It's actually kind of lucky that he's, uh, that he's, that he's actually a lord, because normally I have to get someone to hack away the horse promotion, because it demotes them. Um, but yeah, you still need, like, if you, if there's a character that is recruited by Elliewood in the vanilla story, you still have to talk to that character with Bartra. Like, Bartra is still Elliewood for all purposes, so, yeah. There's Bartra, ladies and gentlemen. He comes with an armor slayer. All uh, inventory is randomized. And this is something that the randomizer does. It no longer sets all weapon ranks to A, which I actually think is really cool. So I'm grateful for that. Then we have Marcus. He's, he actually randomized back into himself. Uh, of course, he's a great lord now. So that means he runs around with swords and axes. Um, you can get anyone in this position, really. And not just uh, pre-promotes. You can get unpromoted units in Marcus' situation as well. But then they, they promote upwards. So, for example, if you get Loan in Marcus' spot, he becomes a paladin instead at Marcus' level. Which, it can be really fucking broken. Um, I've heard of people getting, like, Pent as their pre-promoted guy. And Pent is, of course, through the roof in terms of base stats. So they just fucking massacre the early game with Pent. Um... Marcus is, of course, I, I dare say this version of him is a little bit worse, because he doesn't have a mount, and his base stat seems a lot lower, particularly his speed is really low now. But I'm fine with this. Marcus is still going to be a valuable unit in the early game, but he's probably not going to be able to keep up with the rest of my team, uh, particularly since enemies are so much stronger now. So he's probably going to fall behind somewhere along the mid-game, but I'm still going to use him for everything he's worth. And he comes with the Light Brand, a Worm Slayer, and the Wind Sword, which is really cool. Then we actually have a Thief. Thank God for that. It's Kanas. He's right here, ladies and gentlemen. In my Fire Emblem 6 LP, I didn't have a Thief, and it really fucked me over, because I wasn't able to steal things, and that really fuck fucked up my economy in a big way. Not so with Kanas, or we now we have Kanas, so that's really good, and I like Kanas' growth rates, actually. Kanas has really low speed, but thankfully, as a thief, he has a base speed of 13, so he should be good. Uh, all of his other stats are really balanced, although his luck is really shit, so we gotta, we gotta, we gotta to take good care of him. He's gonna be very fra fragile, but he's gonna, gonna be able to steal things, and that's good. Now, of course, uh, I hope his speed gets camped, because of course, one of my big problems in my Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem 8 randomized run was that uh, my thief, Kyle, he just wouldn't level speed, so he couldn't steal anything, not even from the monsters, which really sucks. So yeah. And then, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I got so happy when I saw this, can you guess it? Can you guess who this is? Oh my god, it's Louise! Yes, we start with Louise! And she retains her A support with Pen, so whenever he shows up, I have no idea when he shows up, she's gonna support with him. So yeah, Luis. Being a pre-promote, she gets scaled down to a level 2 unpromoted unit, in this case a mage. But her base stats are, are still really good, and that's good, because her growth rates are of course not as fantastic being a pre-promote. Um, but she has a 40% magic growth and a 40% speed growth, so I think Luis is going to be a very serviceable unit. Now, if you don't know anything about me, or if you're new to this channel, I absolutely fucking adore Luis. Her official art is so fucking sexy. Uh, she is by far the most beautiful female in... All of Fire Emblem, in my opinion. She's just so fucking gorgeous. I love her personality. Uh, and then people always go like, Oh, but she's married. I don't give, I'm giving a shit if she married. Like, I can still fucking... I can still, like, uh, obsess over her. She is... Oh, I fucking love her. Anyway. So. She has amazing base luck, which is fantastic. Although her con is a little bit low. Her high speed should offset this somewhat. And she has dark darkness affinity now, which is kind of hilarious. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, enough talking about the units. Let us uh, get into it. I like to have solo animations, because if I get healers and shit, uh, I can turn off their animations. Let's do this color. That sounds nice. Let's have fast game speed, fast tech speed. Actually, we don't really care about tech speed, because we're going to skip everything. And I don't like the auto cursor. There we go. Let us begin. So... Of course, these enemies aren't super strong. Ah, look how cute she is. She has the Nino model. But when she becomes a sage, she's gonna look so fucking hot with her long blonde hair. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. Um, I think I'm actually gonna trade the Wind Sword and Light Brand over to Kanas. Yeah, let's do that. So he has a ranged attack. That's really good, actually. Or maybe... Uh, no, wait. Bartra has D-rank, so you can't use them. Uh, but yeah, these enemies aren't super strong. 
uh, because their gro the growth rates don't really kick in at lower levels, but as, as they start leveling up in the later chapters, they're going to be ridiculous. And of course, here's the boss. He's a lord, uh, which means he's not going to be able to attack back. This is one of the complaints I have about the randomizer. Uh, I wish that the randomizer would automatically give every boss a ranged alternative, a 1-2 to two alternative, in addition to their normal randomized equipment. So he should have a long sword, and then he should also come with a light brand, or a rune sword, or a wind sword, or just some means of attacking at range. But the bosses are going to be ridiculous. Um, the bosses in Elwood Hard Mode do have some Hard Mode bonuses attached to them. And in addition to the growth rates, um, the bosses are going to start becoming scary very soon, I have been told. So, anyway, let's, uh, let's actually use the Worm Slayer, because the Wind Sword and the Light Brand are really valuable, so we don't want to waste them. Being able to attack at 2 range with our Sword Units, we have no idea what kind of Sword Units we're going to get down the line. So, um, it's very nice to keep those 2 range alternatives. So, on turn two, we do get two new units, and I don't know who these guys are, but it's a dancer and a brigand! <laughs> we got our dancer, guys! We got our fucking dancer. Will we Will we see the return of the bard train? And, or the dancer train? I, it's gonna be the bard train for me, no matter what. But yeah, let's take a look at Lynn! Ah! It's Lynn, ladies and gentlemen, she's a dancer. It's a shame, actually, that it's Lynn, because uh, Lynn's good growth rates, she does have really good growth rates. They're not really gonna matter much as a dancer. But holy fuck, a base luck of zero? <laughs> what? That's insane. Luckily, her 55% luck growth should, should make sure that goes up. Of course, the dancer only really cares about speed, luck, defense, and resistance. Ma mainly speed and luck, because they, they, they survive based on their avoidance. But yeah, that's uh, that's really cool. We have a dancer. That's amazing. And she comes with Ninin's Grace. Now, the dancers in this game, they do get randomized with different rings. So you can get the Thor's Ire, you can get the Fearless Might, you can get all the different... Uh, uh, you can get all the different rings, which is really cool. And of course, in Elliwood Hard Mode, and in Elliwood Normal Mode, uh, you get a free Energy Ring and a free Draco Shield. And I think I'm gonna give this... give both of those stat boosters to Luis, to be quite honest. Because I want Luis to be amazing. And then, who will this be? Who will this be? It's gonna be Renault! Oh my god, Renault! We get to see Renault in the early game, that's in- <laughs> What?! A base strength of 16! Are you fucking kidding me?! That's- that's fucking ridiculous! Oh my fucking god. Now, of course, Renault, his growth rates aren't super. Like, uh, I have all of the growth rates here in front of me. Renault has a- he has a 40% strength growth and a 35% speed growth. It's not fantastic, but holy shit! Renault is- he has better stats than Marcus, for the most part. What the fuck? He's gonna be an absolute beast. Even though his growth rates are kinda meh, he's gonna be really good. Base skill of 5, though. That's not good. <laughs> He comes with the Emblem Axe. Now, the Emblem Axe, you will see this in the Randomizer quite a lot. It's just an Iron Axe with 60 uses. I don't know what they had planned for it. I think they I think they wanted to use it, but it's in the game's code, which is why it shows up in the Randomizer. Um, but there's just nothing special about it whatsoever. I don't... I think... Since it's called the Tactician's Axe, the re I think that this, or the Emblem Weapons, actually were intended for the character, or the uh, Avatar. Which I think they actually intended to be playable, but they scrapped it. Because it says a Tactician's Axe, so I think that initially they had plans to make Mark playable, and maybe even you could ch choose his class. And depending on what class he, he became, he would start out with an Emblem Weapon of his choice. Uh, which is why they, I think they're not obtainable. Uh, that's just a theory I have, but it would make sense if you look at the description. Anyway, let's fucking check out Renault. Oh my god, he's super good. Oh shit, of course, that's one of the... One of the things when you have... You know what, we can probably just do two animations, because we want to we wanna see all the sprites. So let's dance for Renault. Oh my god, Lin looks gorgeous. Renault does not. <laughs> Lin looks super gorgeous, oh my god. She's green-haired Ninian. That's super cool. Alright, let's, uh, let's use Renault to weak... Oh my god, he, he one-shots this guy. That's hilarious. Let's kill this guy with Renault. Yeah, he doesn't. He, he looks pretty glitchy, and that's because his normal unit has a lot of white in it, since he's a bishop, so it doesn't translate well into the brigand. Um, Louise. Yeah, she... Oh my god, she crit. She critted. Oh my god. Yep, she critted. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm definitely gonna give the strength ring to Louise, because her 40% magic growth does need a little bit of help, and I don't want Louise to get magic screwed, because I really want to use her, because I fucking love her. So... 
I hope Pan shows up early. That would be awesome. Like, he could be Athos, for all we know. So he might not show up for a very long time. But when he does, his automatic A support with Luis is going to be insane. Alright, so... Uh, let's get Marcus up here. I don't think I'm going to be using Marcus much at all. I got so many good units in my initial uh, team, so... I don't understand how I'm gonna, like... There's really no reason to use Marcus at all. But he's a nice tank, I suppose, when needed. And he did bring me a lot of nice weapons. Now, I do need to go and visit this village and get the Draco shield. Uh, so let's go do that. Should we just dance for uh, Marcus to get him back into the fray? We could do that. I think I'm going to turn off uh, Lin's animations pretty quickly, though. We can see her a couple more times, and that's it. Marcus does not look good. <laughs> he has all white... Actually, it looks kind of cool. He has, like, all white armor. Um, Alright, let's... Uh, we can probably kill this brigand with Kanas. Let's use the... I don't know, the Worm Slayer... Hmm, the Windsword has 40 uses. I don't... Do you ever get the Windsword in Fire Emblem 7? I don't think you do. Do you? I think it's an unused weapon. It was in Fire Emblem 8 as well. Although there was this armory inside the Tower of Valny that sold it, if I remember correctly. But yeah, I think I will actually... Uh... Oh crap. Oh shit. I think I may have lost Kanas. Because that brigand can attack him as well. Unless he's stationary. Oh, please level defense. Please level defense, Kanas. Come on. Hit points, strength, luck. Oh, he leveled defense! Alright, he might not get killed by the other brigand then. Uh... <laughs> oh, he's fine. He's fine. I do need to get him an iron wep uh, weapon, though. I think I think there's a sh uh, armor in the next chapter that sells iron weapons. So that, that should be good. Alright. Wow, that was way too scary. We'd... They do sell some vulneraries uh, over here. Maybe I should go buy some. Uh, who has the energy ring? I think that's uh, Lin. Yeah, you know what? We're giving the Draco shield and the, uh, yeah, we're, we're making Louise great again, Orion. We are making Louise great again. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, we can probably just move uh, Marcus over here. Kanas, I don't have a healer. I hope I get a healer soon. That would be nice. Maybe I should buy some vulnerabilities? I don't know. Nah, I should probably save my money. But yeah, I am totally stat boosting the hell out of Louise. She's becoming a tank, and she's becoming a damage dealer. That that mu that much is decided. I want to. I want Louise to be the first unit I promote. All right. So uh, can Renault help out here? He can one shot this guy. Good good enough for me. I keep. I, I think that he's a pre promote. So I'm like, I shouldn't give him experience. But no, he's not a pre promote. He's level two. He just has absurd bases, which is really fucking cool. Alright, let's give Bartra a kill. Boom. Now, maybe I should save the magic ring, but I'm a shameless Louise fanboy, so I'm gonna give her special treatments. Uh, let's see. There you go. Energy ring, indeed. <laughs> ah, this is great. Alright, I should probably kill this brigand first, though. Yeah, let's kill this brigand first. If I can hit him, which I, I didn't do. Well, that sucks. Uh, maybe Kanas can... Maybe Kanas can ki kill him off? He can, uh, but his hit rate is way too shaky. I could dance, I could Ninus Grace him, or I could just kill him with Marcus. That also works. I do want to see Marcus' battle animation. He looks pretty badass, actually, with his white armor. I thought it looked glitchy at first, but it actually looks really good. Like, it looks pretty fucking glitchy, actually, when he moves around, but still. I fucking love Hector's uh, great sword model. He has A rank in swords and D rank in, in axes, actually. Okay. Okay, I gotta be careful so Kanas doesn't die. I'm already noticing that the enemies are a lot stronger than they normally are on this map. Normally, this map is like super face rolling. There we go. Hit points, strength, and luck. That's a good level up for Bartra. He does need speed, though, so I hope he's gonna get some more speed. One experience. Alright, so, uh, we should probably just use the ring with Luis now. Energy ring, there we go. <laughs> Eight magic, lovely. Alright, I think this is the last time we're gonna see Lin. <laughs> I do I do think she looks gorgeous, but I'm, I, I get tired of the dancing animation so quickly. 
Alright, let's see. Let's turn off solo animations again. There we go. Uh, what I also like about that is that uh, what's amazing about turning on solo animations is that the green units, who are normally super annoying, um, they don't get animations when you turn on solo animations. So whenever there's green units involved, which is not often in Fire Emblem 7, let's be honest, um, you don't have to see their annoying combat, which is really nice. Schmack. There we go. Luis is about to level up. I'm gonna feed the boss kill to her for sure. Alright, Renault's, uh, let's place him here so Luis doesn't die. Should I buy Vulneraries? I can buy one Vulnerary. They're always nice to have, but normally I buy way too many Vulneraries. I actually don't know. There's no stealables on this map because you're not supposed to have a thief. But Matthew joins pretty early in the main story, so you start seeing stealable Vulneraries and shit pretty early on. And considering I don't know, like I have no idea when I'm gonna get my first healer, Vulneraries are gonna be really important. Alright, so let's murder this guy. Schmack. Oh, it's so amazing to use Luis on the first level. Fucking love it. Hit points, skill, luck, and resistance. Meh, not not fantastic. Not magic nor speed, but I can I can live with that. There we go. Alright, let's have Luis uh, take a crack at this guy. Wow, he's pretty beefy. What is this? A pack of children coming to play? It's not a pack of children. It's the hottest mage in the universe. What are you on? Well, she's not that hot yet. She kind of looks like a lolly, so maybe I should contain my boner. But when she becomes a sage, oh my god, she's going to be amazing. Uh, Alright, that's going to kill him, so let's not do that. We can let Canals get the kill, maybe? Nah, let's, you know what? Luis is going to get the kill, this guy. Only Luis. Luis is going to get the privilege. He can't fight back, so... <laughs> you know what? Let's use, just use the fire tome. It's much more accurate. This guy looks pretty cool as well. It's like a brown Eliwood. Ba 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 boom. There we go. And our gorgeous blonde is gonna get her first boss skill. Schmack. Hug. I think that's gonna give her a level. Yup. You get a lot of experience in the early game in Eliwood's uh, story. Hit points, skill, luck. Come on, Luis. Don't 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 do this to me. Don't don't get magic and speed screwed, please. I really need you to uh I really need you to get magic and speed. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, that is the first chapter completed. So uh join us next time as we take on chapter twelve. I do believe we meet um in in Elowood's story, you don't get to control Matthew and Sarah in the in the, in this mission. I think you only get to see Hector and uh, Oswin. So I don't know who they are going to be, but I'm really looking forward to seeing it. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this Let's Play, please, please, please consider leaving a like and a comment. It really helps out the channel a lot. I hope you guys will be enjoying this Let's Play as much as I will enjoy making it. When you played Fates, it's so nice to go back to the Game Boy Advance games. It feels so good. It just reasserts to me how good the Game Boy Advance games are. They're really, really fun to play. So... I guess I will see you guys next time. Goodbye!